hello hello family hello friends how are you today thanks for joining me uchechi doris yomi bamishe victor i love all your quotes and all your um your topics god bless you richly thanks for joining friends thanks for joining family i'm here today once again to talk on um if the foundation be destroyed what can the righteous do if the foundation be destroyed what can the righteous do love is scarce commodity love is scarce commodity you know i've been i've been having a very a very um a very restless week you know i've been so restless in my spirit this week because I just see all the all the deception in the church today, all the deception in the Pentecostal church, all the deception still going on in my country, Nigeria, and it pains me and it's sad, and it's it's it shows me the amount of work we still need to do, the amount of work we need to do against deception in the church. And that's why we are, we are forming the group, Movement Against Deception in the Church, you know, formed by my mentor, Dr. Sonia Adelaja, Movement Against Deception in the Church. Because it's such a big mountain, deception of ignorance, deception of, of religion, deception has crept into the church quietly without us even being aware of it. So much deception everywhere, you know. I was speaking to a friend this week, um, was it last week, and my friend was just discussing with me about, you know, everything that is going on in the church and all the messages we've been getting and she just cannot wait to, <laughs> to go to Ukraine because she was saying that since I came back from Ukraine, my life has never been the same again, you know, I'm just, I just, I just changed totally, you know, I became a new person. <laughs> And she says she's planning to go to Ukraine in November because she needs to go and see firsthand what it means to to do church, what it means to be a child of God. Yeah. And I just laugh because that's true, you know. When I came back from Ukraine, I just could not I could not fit in anymore. I could not play church the way I used to do anymore. I could not do church the way I used to do. I came back and I saw that I have dethroned Jesus a long time ago and enthroned myself. I came back and I realized that I've been so selfish, so egocentric in my Christianity, waiting on the Lord when God is waiting for me. I had no drive anymore. When I was young, I used to have so much drive. I used to have so much ambition. I, I, I had big and big and marvelous dreams, you know. But the more I was sinking into religion, the more I was sinking into religion, the more I was being looked at as spiritual, <laughs> the more I was losing all my drive, all my dreams, all my ambition, the more I was just sinking in religion. I came back and I realized that I had no more desire to be the best in anything. I had, I even had not enough love. I, my love, my love had been diminished. The love of Christ, the love that brought me to Christianity has gone down a long, to, to like 10% or 20. And I thought I was at the top of my game. Very religious, very religious. Running to church. Every little thing running to church. Every little thing. Sometimes I'm uh, just coming for work. I've never even prepared food for my husband, but we have a program in church. I am straight there. I'm going to church. No sense, no sense of, no, 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 no understanding of what it means to be a Christian anymore. I lost it. I was a Christian for 17 years. 17 years. I had no compassion. I had, I, I, compared to now or compared to what I really want to be, I can see that I had no compassion. Very judgmental. Very self-righteous. I dethroned Christ and I enthroned myself. Very selfish. Selfish in prayers. Selfish in demands. Selfish in needs. Myself. Selfish. I enthroned myself. 
And the more I struggled, the more I struggled when I came back to fit in again into the religious setting I left, the more I couldn't. I couldn't. I realized that I can no more be the same Tega that left this town for Ukraine. I can no more be the same Tega that carried religion on my head at the expense of love, at the expense of doing the will of the Father, at the expense of understanding why God has called me to, this, to, 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 to his kingdom, why God has called me, why God has made me, why he has saved me. Just so unaware of it, I was all religious, all religious, and running, running, no purpose, no direction, no vision. And every day I'll be shouting, uh, I've come to do that will. Every day I'll be shouting, uh, use me, use me, use me. With no tangible conversion of all my religious experience, all my, all my anointing, everything I was getting from church, no conversion. Because it was all selfish, selfish desires in me. My life could not remain the same again. And I realized, I went there and I realized why. Why our churches are so ineffective in changing society. I realized how, how, how much the Christians have lost our passion, our drive, our dreams. How much we have lost our desires, our talents. All in the name of religion, religion, religion. How we become servants to, 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 to our bosses, to our leaders in churches. How we become slaves. How our lives we have been controlled and manipulated by the author spiritual authorities we have. And I said no. I saw church the way it was supposed to be run. I saw church in a different dimension. And I said no, I can never remain the same anymore. I can never remain the same. I realized that I've wasted 17 years of salvation because I never converted all my religious experience to tangible products. I never, I, even though I was shouting that I want to be the head and not the tail, the first and not the last, I was not growing anywhere. I was comfortable in my job. I was comfortable working for Uncle Sam. I was comfortable in everything. All I wanted to do was just to go to church, just to go to church just to go to church. And this is not only my mentality. This is the mentality of a lot of people in my country. A lot of Christians where yeah, I come from. And it's so sad. It's so sad, you know, that this is the mentality that we have about, about Christ, about our salvation, that we are waiting and waiting and waiting on the Lord. We are still waiting on the Lord. We are still waiting on the Lord. Our biggest ambition was just was to get a bigger building for our church. Our biggest ambition was just to, to move to, to a, more, a more beautiful place for us to fellowship. We had no, we had no thought of how to reach the society that we were. Yeah. Our biggest ambition was to host the next big event that our, our major leaders are coming for. Our biggest ambitions, and it's not only in, in all the churches, they are competing to host leaders from, from, the Niger, from Nigeria. That was our biggest ambition, and we'll say we've achieved for the year. We've received all the divine blessings, all the, all the, all the things that God has in store for us, we received it for that year. Me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. So sad. So sad. And I thank God that it's, it's, you know, the church in Ukraine is not, is not the only church. You know, there was a testimony somebody was giving when he, about being delivered from this yoke of religiosity. And he was talking about a church in Malaysia, you know, in the Kingdom Fruits being organized by the DSC platform. This gentleman was talking about a church in Malaysia that was just exactly like what they are doing in the Ukraine church. So it means that there's hope for my country. Even though I'm a bit restless and troubled and seeing all the mountains that we need to surmount in my country, I can see that there's hope for my country. You know? That the, the church in Malaysia, that their focus was not on themselves. Their focus was on their nation. Their focus was on people. Their focus was on love. And that is what my church, that is what my country have missed. That is what Christianity in my country have missed. We've missed the fundamentals. We've missed, we've missed love. We've missed compassion. We have missed truth. 
We have missed love. We have missed compassion. We have missed truth. The fundamentals of our Christian faith, we've missed it. No more love anymore. No more compassion for the needy. No more love for, 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 for those that are dying. No more compassion for the poor. No more compassion for those in prison. No more compassion for the widow. No more compassion for those that cannot eat. No more compassion for the destitute. But we are, go, we are going to church. Every day we are praying. Every day we are praying to God. Every day we are praying for miracles. We are praying for God to bless us. God to bless us. No more of, 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 of the fundamentals of our Christian faith. We've left it long time ago. We've put it aside. We've put it aside. We've put it aside in my country. And that's why this, I, I'm, I'm, I, 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 even, even though I'm restless in my spirit, I still have hope. Because like we are saying in our, in our, in our platform this week, that one, with, one on the side of truth is a majority. If we're going to be 300 on movement against deception in the church, against the millions in my country that are, that are doing the wrong thing, is a majority. If we're just 300 on the movement against deception group, going ahead strategically to fight, just because we are on the side of truth into Nigeria, we are going to be majority. It will only take time. But the truth will always prevail. The truth will always speak for us. The truth will always come out. Christianity in Nigeria, mm, love and compassion is so far from it. It's so far from it. You know, the guy was talking about the church in Malaysia. That even, even, even the church, they have, they, even as they are praying so much, they are planning. As they are praying so much, they are planning. They even have a program whereby they go to, to, to help the Muslims, that are, the children that are fasting and go to, to their mosque on Fridays and they can't come back to school. They even have a program where they, are, they carry the children, transport the children to their mosque and bring them back to school just so that they don't miss school. They don't miss their education. They don't mind they are going to their mosque, but they want to help them to come back and to get their education. Where is it done in my country? That we love this Muslim so much that we are ready to help them. We are ready to show them the love of God. We are ready to send compassion, our compassion for, 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 for their lives, for their education. That we are ready to go and help them. It's not in my country. Rather, our leaders are teaching us how to kill them. Our leaders are teaching us how to curse them. Our leaders, our leaders are teaching us to rain curses on them. Our leaders are teaching us how to destroy them. Who is going to destroy them? The leaders or God? Or God that has created them in his image and his likeness? Is God going to destroy them? What a waste of time. What a waste of time. Why are our leaders not teaching us anymore the, 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 what compassion and what love is? The church in Malaysia, the church we, 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 we organize and make food and prepare food for the elderly in the communities, even though they are Muslims and they are fasting, they know that some of them will not be able to have food to break their fast. The church will prepare food and the church will package the foods and go and give to these Muslims to break their fast. Is that not amazing? Is that not love? Unconditional love, whether you are a child of, whether you are a Christian, whether you are a Muslim, whether you are an atheist, as long as you are made in the image and likeness of God, as long as you are a man or a woman or a child, you have entitled to their love. You are entitled to their compassion. You are just like them. And I realize that there's hope for my country. People will think that, oh, you think uh, you, call, you went to Ukraine because you went to Ukraine. It's happening. There are pockets of them, pockets of churches doing the right thing all over the world. Pockets of churches like this in China and in other places in Asia doing the right thing. So I know that there's hope for my country. There's hope for Nigeria. There's so much hope for my country. Yet what happened? That we missed the fundamentals. Love, love. Christ was, he came to show us who the father was. He came to show us who the father was. A friend of mine called, a friend of mine, you know, in Nigeria, I called his, um, his friend in Germany. The friend was, um, is a pastor. And he asked this friend that, oh, how is ministry in Germany? How is ministry going? You know? And the friend in Germany, who is a pastor, said, ah, ministry here is very hard, though. That's a Nigerian a pastor. In Germany, ministry here is very hard. Though. The people they don't know how to give. The people are very stingy with their money. So this is my pastor friend in Nigeria, and I said, Ah, 
I ask you, how is ministry going? And all you can tell me is that the people in Germany are very, the ministry is very hard in Germany because the people don't give. That is the average, average pastor's mentality of ministry. That is the average pastor's definition of ministry in my country. How much the people can give. How much we can milk from the people. The people don't give, so ministry is very hard. Is that ministry? Is that ministry? Love is scarce commodity in the African church. Love is scarce commodity. Expression of love. It's not I love you, I love you with the love of the Lord. It's not I love you with the love of the Lord. It's expression of that love. Expression of that love to those that can't repay us back. Do we have those that can't repay us in my country? There are loads of them, thousands and millions of them that can't repay us. But we don't, we don't see them anymore. Our leaders don't see them anymore. I remember when I was growing up, we, we had the best, the best hospitals that was, that was almost free in my state, Delta State, Eku Baptist Hospital. It was, it was the Baptist that came to our country that established that hospital, virtually free. We have, we have, um, we have doctors and nurses coming from abroad to, to six months, one year to just work as missionaries in the hospital. Virtually free. All the children that we had that period, all the children that we had that period, we are, we are, we are giving birth to in that hospital. Treatments and everything. Virtually free. By the church. So what is happening to our mega churches in Nigeria? Do they have hospitals that are free? No. There's no law for the sake. The fundamental, true religion with me states. Do they have hospitals that for, for the sick people? No. Do they have schools for the, for the villagers, the, the, the people that cannot go to school? Let me, let's sponsor them to primary school. Our churches in Nigeria cannot do that. All we do is how to, how to hold bigger crusades, how to call people, how to bless them and how to say that, oh, you give your life to God, praise the Lord and go away. No transformation of society, no effect, no being the light and the salt. And we are begin, begin, building bigger buildings instead of building lives, instead of building people. And God's heart is, up, is on people. God's heart is on people. You know, I read, I read this week in one of this, um, one of this Facebook page about Francis Chan. He was one of the big, the big um, pastors um, with a mega church in California. And he, and he left the church. He left the church and he said, no, I cannot do this anymore. When he was talking about it and he said that he left because he realized that people, these 5,000 people were coming every week, every week to, to listen to his own gift. And they will go away and next week they will come back again to listen to his own gift. And he realized in the Bible that the Bible has, God has said that every man has been given a talent. Every man has been given a gift. That means these 5,000 people, they have gift that needs to be developed. They have gift that they need to use to shine the light of God on this world. But no, every week they come to him and he was becoming proud. When he's coming, there's a whoosh sound. There's a quietness in the place. And Francis Chan said his spirit was restless and he said no this i'm missing it the religion i i got when i was a teenager when i was i received christ and i had I, every minute i i was running to share the gospel to people that he was losing it completely he was missing it people were just coming to meet him and he was praying for them and preaching and blessing them and there we go none of them were for pursuing purpose none of the five thousand they were all looking at his own gift and thinking that his gift is the best. Meanwhile, they all have gifts in, in the inside of them that needs to be developed, but are not being developed. They were coming to him and he was giving them milk. And he said, no, 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 I can't do this anymore. I'm losing my soul if I continue to do this. And he left. He left. He said, no, I can't run this church anymore. And he went and he opened that. He opened little, little groups. He started new ministries of little, little groups that were meeting in houses. Meeting in houses, few families, people that they, 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 could, they, could, they could talk up, they could love each other, they could help each other, they could study the Bible together, pray together, understand how to help themselves, and they will go home and understand how to continue in the work to fulfill purpose. That those were the kind of groups he was creating. Meeting in houses, no overhead costs, because he realized that the overhead cost of running is 5,000 
people church was was going to the millions but no overhead costs in this kind of churches there was great love in this church people were beginning to to read and to understand the bible for themselves they were not going there to meet the pastor for the pastor to interpret everything and interpret everything and pray over their head every person in those small small churches that were meeting in their houses we are knowing god for themselves that is the purpose of church that is the purpose of church Little groups coming together like in the days of John the Baptist, like in the days of like in the days of the Bible of Jesus Christ. People meeting in houses. Our overhead costs are becoming so much. Our overhead costs are becoming so much that we are at the detriment of helping lives. Because we are trying to build a bigger structure, we are trying to build a bigger building. We've left the fundamentals of loving people. True ministry, you can't do ministry without, you can't have any ministry without the love of people. True ministry is, the sh is how you show love to people. It's showing of love to people, demonstration of love to people. That is true ministry. It's not how, how big your structure is. It's not how beautiful your building is. It's not how lovely the, 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 the instruments are. It's not how gorgeous the choir uniforms are. True ministry is how much you can show love to people. Can you show love to people without carrying your Bible? Can you show love to people without even preaching the word? That is true ministry. Can you show love to people without talking, with your life, with your body, with your expression, with everything you have? Show love to people, irrespective of whether they are Christians or Muslims or pagans or atheists or weak or poor or rich or poor, whatever they are. True ministry is about people. And that was what... Uh, uh, that was what... Francis Chan realized and he said, no, 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 this mega church, I can't do it anymore. I'm becoming proud. I'm becoming, I'm becoming prideful. I don't know. I have lost touch of love. I've lost touch of humility. True ministry. Is it still in my country? What is happening? You know, I was talking to my, I was talking to some family members this week and I was asking them, how is your church doing? And they go to one of these vibrant, you know, mega church, the, one of the known ones. And then they're not just telling me that, ah, uh, and when they were talking about it, that, ah, uh, it's like, it's like they were tired of church. That everything they do now is, ah, uh, have you seen, have you heard that our, 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 our bishop or whatever has bought in a new church? Praise the Lord. Clap for him. Clap for your clap. Say amen. If you want to be like him, shout amen. If you want to be like his children, shout amen. Then they will not do mantle service. They will not give them handkerchiefs, handkerchiefs, handkerchiefs. That how many handkerchiefs would they have in their houses? And I looked at them and, and I could see that they were tired of religion. And it baffled me and I, re I just, I, that was when I realized that even as much as we are hearing all these messages from DSA platforms, all these messages that are coming up about the kingdom, about the kingdom, the kingdom, the message of the kingdom, the expansion of the kingdom of God that has not really filtered to the average Nigerian at all. It has not filtered to the average Nigerian at all. And that was, that was, how, my, that was how my spirit has been so restless this week. That how can we do it? How can we do it? We need to come and be strategizing now. We need to come and be planning how we can do it. I was speaking to a pastor friend in Nigeria uh, this week and I was telling him about this thing. And, and he was saying that he, he has downloaded all this message, the messages that we had on the platform before before the, the closure of that page. They had downloaded all those messages. And I knew that those messages were the messages that changed my life, that turned my life 360 degree and made me to refocus on what God has, what God is focused upon. So I said, ah, what, how do we distribute those messages? Because I have no many people that are frustrated with church right now in Nigeria and just need to be liberated the way I've been liberated. And he was telling me that he, he, he can put them in, in memory sticks and he can put them in sticks and send it to them, whatever. I said, ah, no problem. I'm just going to get sticks, loads of memory sticks, USB sticks from here. And I'm going to send them to, to Pastor Mimi in Nigeria because he needs to download those things because I found out that they don't have data. They don't have data to be watching all this all this um broadcast in facebook they don't have enough data but if it's a memory stick that the the, the the series are loaded in 
then they can just put it in their phone and, and begin to, to listen. They can just put it in their iPad and begin to listen. I said, okay, memory sticks. I said, I'm going to send you memory sticks because we need to be, we need to package them. We need to package these series and begin, this series and begin to send them to people to liberate them because a lot of people are just tired of the way church is being done in Nigeria. They are just tired. They are over full of the way church is being done in Nigeria. You know? I was just, I was, I was, um, I was um, thinking this week, you know, I, today I was just been singing this song about how God wants us to be make him visible, about how God wants us to make him visible. God so much wants us to make him visible. He said we are his eyes, we are his feet, we are his hands, and we are just playing. Our leaders have taught us, and, and I don't blame them, I don't blame the Christians, the, the, the righteous ones, the Christians in Nigeria. I don't blame them because I was just like that. Even with my education and everything, I lost myself in religiosity. If I could lose myself in religiosity, I never knew that I was not pursuing purpose or fulfilling purpose for 17 years. I know that I, I understand what my people are facing in Nigeria. If I could do that, I understand what my people are facing in Nigeria. They are lost in religiosity. They are lost because of the, the doctrines coming from the church. They are lost because our leaders, our so-called holy fathers, they, they don't understand the message of the kingdom. Our so-called holy fathers don't understand how to impart a society for God. Our so-called holy fathers don't understand how to make the invisible God visible in our bodies. That is why we have millions going to churches. We have millions of Christians, but they are not carriers of Jesus. They have, they have Jesus in the inside of them, but they don't even realize that they are carriers of Jesus. They don't even realize how to make the invisible God visible. They don't realize how to make the invisible God visible. My family don't realize how to make invisible God visible. They don't realize how to be a carrier of Jesus, an expression of Jesus on this earth. And the whole earth is waiting. The whole earth is waiting. They are yearning. They are mourning. Nation, society is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. And our leaders don't even realize. They don't even realize. One is either out of ignorance, two is becoming out of greed. And and I just I just list I, and I and I just look at this um this this quote that says that there are two ways to be fooled. One is to believe what isn't true. We we'll believe what isn't true for a long time. We we'll believe what isn't true. We we'll believe what isn't true for a long time. I believed it even with all the education I had. I believed what isn't true. I lost what, 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 what true Christianity is. I lost the fundamentals of my Christian faith. I love, I love I lost how to love people. I lost how to be the best in my field. I lost myself in religion. And I understand what my people are passing through in Nigeria. How lost they are in religion. How lost they are in religion. How, 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 how we become servants when God has said we should be kings and priests. How we become servants in the church of God. You know, I remembered even, even as, as I was in church, uh, I was, as I was in church, somebody, one of, one of our leaders was saying, ah, take, I know your gift, I know your gift, but I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. I know, I know your calling, but I'm not going to tell you. I'm stupid me. I would say, ah, tell me what my calling is. Somebody should tell me what my calling is. I never knew that I could even discover my calling from the inside of me. I never knew that I could even discover my calling from my, my, what I love, what I hate, what, 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 what passion I have in the inside of me. What gives me, what gives me so much pain, but, but I just feel that I need to find a solution to it. I never knew that I could discover my calling from the inside of me. The past, the man of God said, no, I'm not going to tell you your calling. Oh, what I, I, I just looked down and I just laughed at myself. Calling, calling, calling. And, those, and, this, and this is one of, this is the fundamentals of why we are here, how, how to know what we are called to do. And a lot of us in Nigeria, a lot of the Christians, they don't even know, they don't have a clue what they are called to do. They don't have a clue how to, how to pursue their purpose. They don't have a clue how to be the best. They don't have a clue how to bring out all the God-given talents, how to build them up to be a solid rock, to, be a, to, be a, to, to showcase the glory of the Father. They have no clue. And my leaders are just there. And I, let me look at, let me say the quotes again. There are two ways to be fooled. One is to believe what isn't true. And the other is to refuse to believe what is true. There are two ways to be fooled. By Soren 
Kegegad. One is to believe what isn't true and the other is to refuse to believe what is true. I believe what isn't true for a long time. I was fooled. I agree. But now that I know the truth and, and people that know the truth and still don't want to believe the truth, they want to remain to be fooled, then they are fools completely. They are fools completely. So it's so you see amazes me that some people they see with all this information coming out left, right, and center about the gospel of the kingdom, about perseverance, about diligence, about hard work, about being the best, about carrying God, about making the invisible God visible in our life, in our sphere of influence. They are still saying, No, I don't want to listen. I want to be a servant. I want to be a servant. I want to be a servant forever. I want to be a servant under this religion, under this denomination. I want to be a servant under this man of God. Why don't you, why can't you realize that you are a man and a woman of God yourself? You are a man and a woman of God yourself. I look at a friend sometime back and I could see her that the, 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 the man of God that, that over her was, was pulling her like a puppet. One day he would praise her. The other day he would, he would, he would shout publicly at her, humiliate her in, in public. And sometimes I would see her crying. I called her one day and I said, look, I said, you're losing your joy. You're losing your joy. All because you want to, you want to serve on that woman. You're losing your joy. One day he will call you and he will praise you in public. The other day he will humiliate you. you don't know where you stand you are just crying on dying crying on dying and that is their attitude i say you are losing your joy my dear take back your joy your joy is in christ take back your life your life is in christ he's not under that that man of god that you are slaving and dying and dying for a lot of homes a lot of things a lot of atrocities have happened on that christians all obeying a man of god all obeying men of god that that are that are that that, that you could see Clearly that they are not carriers of the truth. Clearly you could see that those leaders are not like Jesus Christ. And yet you are still waiting that they are the man of God. They are the man of God that will, buy, will continue to buy under there. I will continue to buy under there. I told her she you're losing your you're losing your joy. Pick your life back. Pick your even in my even in my state of ignorance, I could see that nobody could press my head down and press me down and begin to make me to cry one minute and to be happy the no, or the next day, all because he's a man of God. At least I see her eyes and I see her senses to notice that. And that is a lot what, what a lot of people are doing. Still in bondage in my country, under men of God. How can you, how, 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 how can, how can, with all these messages of the kingdom, of what the church should be doing, and churches in Nigeria are still not talking about it. They are still not saying that I've missed the leaders, and they're still not saying that, ah, maybe I've really missed this thing. Oh. Maybe I've missed this, the way I'm teaching these people. Maybe I'm still feeding them like, like children. Oh. Is there something I need to change? Our leaders, they are, they are not even saying anything. They are still doing the same status quo. They are still doing the same thing that they've been doing for ages and our society has still they are not even asking themselves that ah the 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 the, 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 the apostles when they enter the town a town turned upside down those that were turning the world upside down have come to us that was what they were saying about the apostles they were the leader, our leaders leaders are not even asking themselves why are we not even turning Nigeria upside down we Christians as many as we are they are not asking themselves that's why when 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 it's the, the, the talk on Titan offering came and I was telling some people in Nigeria that look, oh, you better start where, open your eyes and begin to use your tight right. It was like our, they, 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 they couldn't grasp it. And sometimes I just continue to talk and talk and talk because a lot of things I need to talk about that tight and all free. And I know that I'm, I'm calling them from here. I will just keep talking and talking and talking until, until they will get it. Because I have the passion to see my people liberated. I have the passion to see Nigeria to pick up that their Christian faith and begin to know that their love, their love should shine and begin to know that they are the best and that they should go and influence society and begin to know that no person should be poor and hungry and suffering around them without them giving a helping hand you know without them giving a helping hand that we, we have so many the, 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 because the messages are still the same we still have loads of doctors in the house loads of lawyers in the, in the churches and they don't even know that oh this says God is saying that I should make him, I should make him visible. Maybe we should come together as lawyers. Maybe that's our money we are paying to this to this church. We can say, Pastor, please, oh, is it okay if we use this money? This is our tithes and offering. Let's use it to help these people. Let's use it and put it into this our 
our our legal group that we are forming so that we can even go and help those people in prison those those there are lots of youths in my country that are falsely imprisoned there are lots of youths in my country that have not they have not brought their case to light for years and nobody's talking about them because they don't have it because they, they don't have any any they are, they are poor or they are destitute so they just forgot them in prison and we have lots of lawyers in the church they don't even say that pastor let let's, let me form this group of uh, let's form this group pastor we lawyers in this our church we are going to start helping those poor boys in the prison we are going to start helping those poor youths in the prison those ones that don't have people to be able to to give them legal aid we are going to work and fight for them to come out even those that have been that have been that have been been in prison for ages and they've not had their case we are going to fight for them to 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 dismiss the case because they've overstayed it a lot of them are dying in the prison a lot of them are dying in the prison. We have lots of lawyers in church, but because love and compassion has left the church, because we don't teach love and compassion anymore in the church, the lawyers, they just say that, God, I'm, I'm broke, I'm broke. Some are saying, I don't even have work. You don't have work. You don't have work. When people that need your, your help, you lawyers, people that need your help are all over society in Nigeria. You don't have work. Why don't you take it upon yourself? It will cost you nothing. So just say, okay, except maybe your little tights. Let me talk, just even use my tights. I can transport to, the, to, to represent them. I can transport to the courts and begin to stand for those people. And even in that process, doors will start opening because even the society will begin to recognize you. And when you want to go for a house of assembly or wherever, they will say, oh, we love this man because this man has been helping the poor and the destitute. We will vote for him. We don't understand. We don't understand what, when, when God says that, that he has given us He has given us the wealth of the hiddings. He has given us the wealth of the, of, 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 of the unbelievers. They are reserved for the children of God. We don't even have a clue how to get it. We don't have a clue. We are in the churches. We are praying that God should give us job. God should, when there are jobs every year all the problems around us they are all jobs all the problems around my country that's we that are solution carriers we can go there bring the solution and in the process we have jobs ourselves we are fulfilling purpose we are helping god's children we are helping god's creation and in the process we are helping ourselves we don't even have a clue we don't have a clue there are no jobs so there are no jobs so there are no this there are no that in the churches we have doctors lots of doctors all they think about is their selfish gain and how to come and sow to the man of god they don't they don't have love and compassion anymore because love and compassion has been removed from our pulpits love and compassion have been removed from our holy men of god's mouth love and compassion has been destroyed a long time ago the foundation of our christian faith has been broken what can the poor man, what can the average man that is coming to meet God in church, the average man that is coming to understand God in church, what can they do? What can the average man that don't even know how to read the Bible, that wants, just wants to, to understand the Bible from the mouth of the man of God, from the mouth of the man of God. Many of our, of our mothers and grandparents, they, they can't read, but they just want to understand God from the mouth of the man of God. But the man of God has failed us woefully. They failed the church woefully. They faith the Lord Jesus Christ hopefully and they are not even aware of it. They are not, even those that are aware of it don't even want to change. How sad. How sad. How sad. The doctors, people are dying on, on well, sometimes, sometimes you hear of people that got accidents but because they could not buy the medical, the, the card, the card in the hospital, they will leave them to bleed bleed in front of the hospital and they, they will die in front of the hospital some cannot buy any little medicine and they will die in, in the hospital door some cannot they are, they, are, they, are, they are fractured they are bleeding they cannot be treated they cannot have emergency treatment they will die in front of the hospital door and the pastor and the, and the doctors they are men of god the doctors they all have churches they are going to they all have churches that they are sowing seeds to they all have men of god that they are sowing seeds to they are all paying tight but they've lost They've lost the passion and the heart of Jesus. They've loved the cry of Jesus. They've loved the cry of Jesus. They've loved passion. They've lost compassion. They've lost love. They can't say, let me, let me make this my, 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 my work. God has blessed me with this gift. Every gift we've given to God has given to us is for his glory. Every gift God has given to us is for his glory. If he has made you a doctor, he's for his glory. If he has made you a lawyer, it's for his glory. If he has made you a businessman and you're wealthy, it's for his glory. Every gift is for his glory. 
these doctors cannot say, okay, I'm forming this group that we're going to put a certain amount of our money aside or a certain amount of our time aside that we're going to use to help and to help and to, and to, to treat those that cannot afford to be treated. They are all in the churches. The churches, the leaders are not telling them to begin to form groups and think tank on how to begin to influence and affect society and how to begin, how to, begin to change society for God and how to be the light of God and how to make the invisible God visible. Invisible God visible. You know, I was looking, I was looking at, I was looking at um, James, was he um, Hebrews 10? Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10 verse 5 says, that is why when Christ came into the world, he said to God, you did not want animal sacrifice or sin offering, but you have given me a body to offer. You were not pleased with bond offering or other offerings for sin. Then I said, lo, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written in the volume of the book. Lo, I have come to do your will, O Lord, as it is written in the volume of the book. Jesus, which is the firstborn, and is still talking to us too, that a, that burnt offering God has no sacrifice, any, has no pleasure in anymore. He has given us a body. He, he, we, are, we are spirit, but he puts us, he encapsulates us in a body so that we can do his will on earth, so that we can be his eyes and his feet on earth. And we still don't understand in the volume of the book it is written for every christian in nigeria i have come to do the will of the father in the volume of the book it is written for you it's written for me as we have come to do the will of the father we have come oh god in our flesh he has put us in the flesh form because it's only the flesh that can represent him here on earth it's only we that are that are called human the best of god creations that can represent god on this earth he has given us, he has given us everything, everything we need pertaining to life and godliness to come and be his feet, to come and be his eyes. And we've lost compassion, we've lost love, we've lost an understanding of how to be his feet, how to be his eyes, how to be his voice, how to be his mouth. To make the invisible God visible. Though I want to be an expression of your love, Lord. Oh, I, I want to make the invisible God visible. We, we need to make the invisible God visible. In the little we can do, we need to make the invisible God visible. Our churches in Nigeria now, they need to begin to realize that I, I, we need to be forming groups of how to help, how to feed, how to feed nations, how to feed these poor people. Our churches in Nigeria, they need to wake up and hear the cry of the Father. They need to wake up and hear that the Father is shouting to us. He's whispering instead of whispering, he's shouting, make me that I'm invisible, make me visible. Be an expression of my love. Make me. <clears throat> The invisible God make me visible. How are we going to make him visible? Anything we can do, anything we can do, it's not enough to know this thing. It's not enough to know this things. It's not enough to, to just be going to DSA platform and be digesting this food. What can we do? How can we make the invisible God? How can we make the invisible God visible? That is my heart cry. That is my heart cry for this week. And that is the song I've been singing this week, Lord. How can I make you visible? How can I make you visible? That is the purpose that you created me for. To make you visible. To make the invisible God visible. How can I be visible? How can I make you visible, Lord? It's my heart cry. So my people in Nigeria, whatever it will take, whatever it will take for us to break down this bondage of religiosity, for us to break down this hold of religiosity, which shall be broken by prayers and by planning, it shall be broken. Say truth, one on the side of truth is a majority. One on the side of God is a majority. That's why we cannot keep quiet. If you can't talk, you write. If you can't try to use your money, if you can't use your money, you, 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 use your, you use something, you do something with your life. Just make the invisible God visible. And let's plan, let's join this movement against deception in the church. Let's come together as one.